Hey everyone, my name is Dan Lawrence and I'm going to be doing a couple demos of the Cosign Container Signing Tool, which is developed as part of the SigStore open source project. Cosign and SigStore are both available on GitHub. Cosign is at github.com slash SigStore slash Cosign. Um, Cosign is designed to let you sign containers easily um, and it supports a couple different workflows that I'm going to go through today. Um, the first one is using a standard fixed public-private key pair that you generate with the tool. Um, you protect that private key um, and you distribute the public key. The second flow I'm going to go through is using the experimental keyless mode, uh, where Cosign can allow you to sign and verify container images without having to use or manage keys. Um, this is enabled by using some of the other components of the SigStore project, which I'll explain as we go ahead. All right, so let's jump into the terminal and I'll show how to get started with Cosign. The very first step uh, before you can start signing and verifying things with Cosign is to generate your key pair. You don't have to use any other tools for this. Cosign supports it for you. So we can do Cosign generate key pair. It prompts us for a password to encrypt that key so we don't have to worry about leaving it on disk. Type that in, confirm, and we're all set. So I'll show you what these keys look like. I'm going to print out the private key to my terminal. It's encrypted, uh, so we don't have to worry about people stealing this or trying to use it unless they also have the password. You can store this uh, on disk, you can store this in a Git repository, you can check it into a public open source project. In fact, that's how we sign um, our cosign releases today. Uh, there's a key in our Git repo that you can see and look at. The part that uh, you need to verify something signed with cosign is the public key. So let's take a look at what that looks like. This is just a standard public key. Um, it's stored in a typical X509 PKIX format that works with any other tools. Uh, we happen to generate one using elliptic curve uh, P256 as the signing algorithm. They have a small key size. They're pretty standard and work with most hardware. So we're going to use the private key to sign some images and we'll use the public key to verify them. Let's get started. Uh, first, I'm going to clean up any other signatures from before on my images to make the demo easy. Get going. All right, now let's start signing. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is sign command, pass in the private key I talked about before, and the name of the image that I just cleaned up. Hit enter. We'll be prompted for our password here. I'll type that in. Now we're signing the image and we're actually pushing that signature right up to the image repository. So if people have access to the image, they can also find the signatures for it. You don't have to set up any extra storage or figure out how to distribute your signatures. So the image has been signed and the signature is up there. Now we can verify again uh, with the public key just passing that same image name. So we're going to do cosine verify. We'll use the public key this time. Don't need a password because the public key is unencrypted. And we performed a whole bunch of checks on that signature, which are printed out here. Um, we, the signature blob or the signature payload, I guess, is this kind of JSON string printed out at the bottom. If you do that same thing again, but pipe it to JQ, I can show you a little bit better what that looks like. The container image isn't a real physical thing that you can sign. Um, instead, you have to sign some kind of representation of it. The canonical representation of a container image is this SHA-256 digest. So that's what we sign. Um, we could just sign this string, but by wrapping it up with some JSON, we have some opportunities to include some extra metadata that we might want to protect as part of that signature. Let's show what some of those use cases might be. Um, we can use those with the cosine uh, sign dash a flag. I'll reset and get back up to the top of my terminal and we'll get started there. Cosine sign dash key. Uh, cosine dot key. Um, now we'll pass in some annotations here. That's the dash a flag. We can do foo equals bar um, for just a random one. And we'll do the rest of the image name. Uh, some actual use cases here might be adding the git commit that the container was built at, a timestamp. Uh, something like that. Um, all this metadata gets put into the signature itself, so you can verify it later. Awesome. So we signed and uploaded the signature again to GCR. Now if we verify, we should see two signatures attached to the image. You can sign the image multiple times. One of them won't have that foo equals bar annotation, and the other one will. Awesome. So we can see that we stuck that here in the optional section. Now, if you want to do some complex workflows to use those annotations to actually verify things, uh, you can pass that same dash a flag into the verify command. So let's do that here. 
the dash a foo equals bar. Now it's going to check that the foo equals bar annotation is there. We can only see one if it all works. Yes. Awesome. So we only see that second signature here. Let's get back up to the top. And so you can use that annotation to kind of build up complex workflows. You can do things like time stamping uh, and protocols like the update framework if you want to by using these optional fields. So that's the basic mode for cosine with fixed key pairs. Um, you could do some extra fancy stuff like store the key pairs in a KMS system, um, like GCP KMS or something else if you want to. And we're working on adding hardware support for things like YubiKeys going forward. Um, but now I'm going to show some of the cool experimental features that make Cosine work really well with the rest of the SIG store components and simplify things even more. So they're experimental, so we have to turn on an experimental flag here first. Let's do export Cosine Experimental equals 1 to turn these on. Um, now this mode that I'm going to show um, uses our full CO root CA um, to get certificates um, using an ephemeral key pair. That means we don't have to store the key on disk. The signatures um, are entered into our ReCore transparency log, which serves as both a discovery mechanism for those signatures and a way to get those signatures timestamped. So we know kind of exactly when they happened and when they were entered and incorporated into that transparency log. So we're going to see a bunch of output, and I'll explain what each of those means as we go ahead. So this is keyless. We don't have to pass keys anymore. So there's no private key here on the command line. Cosine sign, just the image name, no keys. Awesome. So we see what happened here. Um, the terminal I put some text pretty quickly, and then it popped me up to my browser to do a standard Open ID Connect flow. Before I click go, let's jump back here, and I'll kind of show what happened. I said this is keyless mode. It's not entirely keyless. Um, we do have to generate some keys. You just don't have to worry about them. Um, so if the serverless people get to call that technology serverless, uh, even though they're actual servers, we get to call this keyless. So we generated this ephemeral key pair. And now we exchange that public key. We sent that up to our certificate authority, our full CO root certificate authority for code signing. Um, and we asked it for a certificate. Um, that certificate binds the public key that we generated to an identity. Um, now in open source and uh, normal development, your identity really is your email address. That's how we communicate. That's how we build up a reputation in an open source community over time. Um, so in order to do this and bind the certificate to that email address, uh, the service needs to assert and prove that you have access to that email account. And that's exactly what OpenID Connect was designed for. So we pop open the browser to let me go through that flow. We'll come back here now. I will click the right email address, and I've authorized it. So now SIGStore has kind of proven that I have access to this email address at that time. We come back to the terminal, and we see some more text. Um, we signed it with the private key that was generated up here. This is ephemeral again. It never touched our disk. We don't have to worry about losing it or leaking it or having someone steal it. We signed the image. We pushed it here. Um, and then we also uploaded it to our ReCore uh, transparency log, and we get this index here. The transparency log serves a couple different purposes. Uh, let's pull down the entry and show what that looks like, and then I can talk about why this is an important component. Log index 2073. Um, and this is what the transparency log entry looks like. It's kind of hard to read. It's just some random bytes. We will instead use the JSON output mode and, as always, pipe it through JQ to get some pretty output. So this is what gets entered into the transparency log. Um, it's all of the components required to verify a signature. We have the hash itself. This represents the hash of that um, JSON uh, payload I showed before, which has the hash of the container inside of it again. Um, and then we have the signature content. That's right here. These are just the signature bytes that get generated when you do the sign operation. And then the public key itself. So this public key is what's present in the certificate that was issued um, based on the OpenID Connect flow. So the other interesting part that I mentioned is the timestamping. Because these keys are ephemeral, we need to ensure that they're only valid for signing for a very short period of time. We use 20 minutes today just to handle clock skew and queuing times inside of our transparency log. Um, but what we really want to assert is that the signature is entered into the transparency log when the certificate was valid in that 20 minute time period. And so that's why we have this important integrated time field here. This is just a standard Unix timestamp. Um, if you can do the math in your head, you'll see that it was around 9.05 the time right now when I ran that command. Uh, let's do a verify and show how all these components end up getting used. So we do cosine verify. Again, no keys. 
we just type the container name here. Uh, we don't need a public key anymore because that's stored here in the signature itself. And we hit enter. All right, so a bunch of stuff happened here this time. Um, we actually did these extra checks here at the bottom. Um, we checked that the signature was integrated into the record transparency log when the certificate was valid. Um, we checked the signature itself, assigned by a key, and then we fetched that certificate and made sure the certificate was actually valid. It wasn't self-signed, it wasn't a random certificate. It was actually signed by our root CA service. Then finally, we extract the common name from the certificate. Um, you might be used to this being some kind of server host name, but in this case, it's my email address. So what we've proven here um, is that this signature on this image was created by somebody with access to this email address at that specific time. So that's how you can use Cosine both with fixed keys and with our keyless mode um, if you want to tie things back to an OpenID Connect account. Thanks.